Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays and a Vlogtober Day 23. Today I am going to chat a little bit about dead dinners and what a dead dinner is. You may have heard of it as referred to as a dumb supper, but we don't like that term anymore, so we're calling it a dead dinner. And that is a dinner uh, held on Samhain where you are inviting your deceased loved ones to dine with you, setting a place for them, and the entire thing is conducted in complete silence. This is a long-held Samhain tradition. This is the time when the veil is thinnest and you can invite those dead ancestors to come and dine with you. It is usually a more solemn dinner rather than a celebratory one. But since it is you and your ancestors and you're personalizing it, if you would like to make it more of a celebration, you can. But generally it is more solemn and they are used to honor your ancestors, usually the ones who have died in the past year. But if you have any other specific deceased loved ones that you would like to invite, you can do that as well. There are several different cultures that have a history of hosting dead dinners like this. So you can do what feels the most correct to you. The only real requirements are that there is some sort of meal being served, you invite the dead to partake, and everything is in silence. From there, you can really kind of make it your own. As far as what to serve, if your deceased loved ones had a favorite, favorite food or favorite meal, that would be a great option. You can also just do the typical foods of the harvest of this time, so pumpkins, apples, gourds, roots, vegetables, um, wild rice. And you can also make it a potluck style. So if you have other members of your family that you'd like to invite or other witches that understand the idea of a dead dinner, you can always invite them to make a dish that their ancestors would have enjoyed and then have a potluck style dinner instead. The traditional way to set the table is to go this like above and beyond and set it as you were setting up for any other like special holiday rather than a regular weeknight dinner. So you're pulling out the tablecloth, the best plates, the nicest silverware and glassware. Traditionally everything is in a black sort of setting like a black tablecloth and black napkins but if you don't have that that's not necessary. And then usually everything is served and eaten by candlelight. It is usually the seat at the head of the table where you are he's saving a place setting for the deceased if you only have a couple and a large table, you can do a place setting for each deceased loved one that you are inviting. But if you have like a bigger group, have more deceased loved ones that you're inviting, or you have a few witches that are attending that are also going to be inviting their deceased loved ones, having just one single place setting at the head of the table is fine. And you are gonna set that place exactly as you are all of the other ones that your living guests are going to be sitting at. And then you want to light a candle at each place setting. And if you would like, if you don't have too many that you are inviting, you can bring photos or personal mementos of the deceased who you will be inviting. But if you have like a lot of guests and a lot of different witches inviting all of their deceased loved ones at well, the table might get a little crowded. And you can decorate the table. It isn't a bad thing to be using the traditional like skull or coffin imagery. That is just a way to honor the dead and honor death itself as part of that inevitable cycle and the cycle of death and rebirth. So don't think of skull imagery or skull decorations as being sort of tacky or disrespectful. It's actually the opposite. From there, the idea is that the entire evening is in silence. So from the moment you sort of enter the dining area until you leave, everything is silent. That means no phones and no talking to each other. And that also means no speaking out loud of the ritual or inviting the dead. So if you feel better about speaking, then do it ahead of time. It may be an ancestor altar, but otherwise everything is silent. So you are silently inviting your deceased loved ones to join you at the table and your guests should be aware of those rules as well. The idea is to not only make it a more solemn occasion, um, but also that everyone there is better able to tune in to what sort of spirits and energies are around. So you'll actually be able to feel the ancestors that are there. Sometimes when we're all talking and chatting, we're ignoring what is going on and the purpose is to honor those ancestors. So it doesn't make sense to be chatting across the dinner table with your other guests um, and ignoring the invited guests of honor, which would be the deceased. And then the dishes are passed around to everyone to serve themselves and the host will usually begin by placing portions of each dish uh, onto the plate reserved for the ancestors and then passing that around to the rest of the table. 
and then everyone can begin eating. When everyone has finished eating, it, that is the time to silently thank the deceased for attending and let them know that they are free to go on their way, that they are loved. And if you would like to, you can write a short note to them and use the candle at your place setting to burn that and send that message along with them. Once everyone is done with that, then the host can sort of stand up and start the speaking portion of the evening. And uh, if they want, then say a little ritual or thank you just to send the spirits on their way and sort of conclude the evening. As far as what to do with what's left on the place setting for the ancestors, that is completely up to what you feel like your ancestors would appreciate best. Some would find it really wasteful to throw that food away. So in that case, it would be okay to pack it up and use it as leftovers. But otherwise you can just wrap that up and throw it away or leave it outside for the animals, depending on what that food is, if it is safe for the wildlife. But again, that is gonna be up to your ancestors and how you felt in my family wasting food was a big no-no so they would be like do not do not put that outside <laughs> um, use that if you're going to eat it use it for leftovers if you're not then yes go ahead and feed it to the wildlife but don't waste it don't just throw it away but there are others that feel like that would be disrespectful and that the ancestors would appreciate no one else having access to that food. So it's really how you feel. They have gotten the energy from it. It's like an energetic feeding from that food, but they would still feel like the rest of it should just be thrown away. But those are the basics of setting up a dead dinner, hosting one, and inviting your loved ones to attend. It could have as much ceremony and ritual as you would like, not like as the case may be. And I have even heard of some witches conducting the entire thing backwards. So walking into the room backwards, having dessert first, serving the meal backwards, having the place settings flipped backwards. So that could add a, another layer to your ceremony. I personally have never done one that way, but there are a, a lot of options for you. But I personally think it's a really nice time to connect again with that very quiet atmosphere. It is easier to acknowledge that these spirits are there, to spend time with them, to notice their energy and connect with them. And a lot of people do not have that um, opportunity or haven't really sat down to do that, especially if um, we're talking about loved ones who have passed away in the last year, might not have done that since the funeral proceedings. So this might be the first time of contact and being able to spend time with them. A lot of people will treat this Samhain dead dinner on October 31st as the more solemn time and then have November 1st as the more celebratory day. So it really is whatever you are the most comfortable with. So let me know in the comments if you have any other tips for hosting a or attending a dead dinner. Let me know if you're going to plan one for this year for Samhain. And that is everything that I have for Vlogtober Day 23. I will see you tomorrow.